Well, I've had a request to do a video like this now for a long time and uh, finally getting around to doing it. Uh, many people have seen me hold up my Cambridge Bible here um, different times when I'm preaching and you see all these different collars in the text and people say, what's your collar code system and how do you make the collars? Okay, and people say, you know, how do you do, uh, um, do you use a markers or do you use pens or what do you use for your collars? Well, I'll show you here. First of all, Here's my Cambridge Bible. You can see there are definitely different collars here. I write in the margins over here. Sometimes I'll write in here as well. But I have these different collars. Now how do I make those collars? With collared pencils. Okay. So I'm going to go through the collars here, just a basic coverage of, of the different collars. All right. First of all, I use kind of a dark green like this. Dark green for anything pertaining to uh, like trees or or significant verses that have to do with trees I was in the logging industry for a while so you know there's I like verses about trees like the the one verse talks about the willows are by the water courses which is actually very scientific because willows grow good in uh, wet swampy soil so I thought that was very interesting so you know I can look at the verse and I can say ah, dark green it means has to do with trees or vegetation, plant life types of things like that. And, I, you know, I don't go through the whole Bible either and do that with every single verse like that. It's just significant verses that really kind of stand out. Um, next we have this collar here, which is kind of a olive drab, kind of an olive collar. This one here I use kind of like the old military collars of I think World War II and World War I in America. A lot of the uniforms were olive in collar. So... I kind of say it's like a soldier, you know, so verses that pertain to um, fighting the good fight of faith or thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, they'll be highlighted with green, like this olive drab collar, okay? Next I have, these two are actually the same collar, I don't really need two of them, but kind of a, a light, lighter green here. Um, a lot of times I'll, I'll use this one here just as a, a verse that is kind of like about peace or something like a promise of God, something that would bring you peace. So, you know, green, I'm not saying green peace, okay. <laughs> I'm not defending green peace or, or, you know, that. But I'm just saying, you know, verses that, that you know, will bring peace into your life because you look, you think of, of green trees and green grass and things like that. So, that's what I use it for. Peace. Okay? Things that are peaceful. Next we have dark blue. This one here, a lot of times I will use for something pertaining to water. Uh, water, I guess I should say. <laughs> I have my, my uh, Pennsylvania accent sometimes. I say water. People say, what are you talking about? Water, water, however you say it. <laughs> That'll be this one here, the dark blue. A lot of times I'll use dark blue for things pertaining to that. Next we have kind of a, a bluish gray collar here. And uh, this one again I'll use for um, certain verses. Um, I don't remember exactly what this one. Uh, I'd have to find one. But uh, essentially verses that deal with, you know, prophecies and things like that I think is what I was using this one for um, so that's that one next we have kind of this uh, kind of a turquoise collar again this is two of the same thing so I'll just stick that one there this this one here I use this one uh, kind of because it's it's somewhat similar to the color of the uh, nation of Israel their flag you know the blue on there so it kind of reminds me of Israel. So I'll use this one for prophecies or promises that are connected to the nation of Israel. So that's what I use that blue collar for. Next we have kind of a, a teal collar, aqua green it's called here. And again, this one is for kind of a, um, trying to think of what I did use this one for. My, my collar coding system has been changing over the years so I used to actually um, use some of these like I think I used this one for peace as well um, verses of, of comfort 
verses of joy. Um, again, you know, that's what I was using it for. So, you know, I've, I've kind of been changing some of the colors up over the years. Um, yellow, again, these are, I just put a bunch of them down here. Yellow, the color yellow I've been using uh, a lot for like a, uh, verses that are pertaining to God, things that are of, of the Lord, like, you know, a verse about, um, like here, I'll show you this one. You know, it's, flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. You know, see, it's talking about something pertaining to God, something about the Lord, um, you know, something about something that's holy like the Word of God. You know, Psalm 12, 6 through 7, I have that highlighted in yellow as well. And, of course, if it's a very, very significant verse, um, I will also put red around it. <laughs> so, uh, I know complicated, right? But uh, see the red outline around it. And many times I'll even highlight a particular verse or a particular word within the verse. So, that's how I do that. Um, red, uh, the... The color red I will use for something pertaining to the blood um, of Jesus Christ or even to sin because sins are removed by the blood. So a very serious sin or something like that, I'll oftentimes use red to denote that or I'll use red as a highlight with orange or yellow. I'm weird if you haven't figured it out yet. You know, I'm just... <laughs> I have my unique ways. But, you know, hey, you people asked, so I'm just telling you the truth here. But uh, these are all just different shades of red. And, again, I, you know, I, I am not real particular with each of those. Um, here I have an orange collar, and this'll, this is one that I use for things that are evil, like um, things that will send you to hell, real serious sins and things like that, uh, evil movements. Um, things that the devil does or whatever else you know I'll show you another example here in Matthew 18 verse 7 woe unto the world because of offenses for it must needs be that offenses come but woe to the man by whom the offense cometh so you see it's a it's a serious sin there it's a serious bad thing so orange so again as my eyes are scanning the page a lot of times I'm thinking where's that verse out of, about the thing of Offenses must needs come, but woe to the man by whom the offense comes. I think it's in Matthew. And I'll be flipping through and I'll go, hey, there's an orange verse. Oh, that's bad. So kind of lead me to it. Just a, you know, just another way of, of, you know. I mean, a lot of these verses back when I first became a King James Bible believer, this was my very first King James Bible I purchased after using an NIV for 15 years and, and 10 years before that using the New American Standard Version. And so this is my first King James Bible, this Cambridge here. And so, you know, I was quite ignorant of what the Bible taught, and I really didn't know what I was doing looking through the Bible. So, you know, I was trying to do anything I could to help memorize Scripture better. And I could have quicker references to, oh, yeah, that's where that verse was, and that's where this verse was. I mean, if, if you'd have seen me when I first, you know, got saved and when I was first studying the Bible... I didn't know the Bible very well at all. I couldn't quote, I, I don't even think I could quote 10 verses of Scripture after, you know, many months of being saved. I mean, I was just reading and studying and reading and studying and having a hard time with memorization. You know, that's why I sympathize with some people and they say, it's, I have a hard time understanding the King James Bible. You will at first, okay? I mean, you're a babe in Christ. Babies don't, you know, they're not very proficient at walking and running and talking and, and doing a lot of activities. Um, you grow in time. And, you know, if this helps you to grow, if this system of collar coding and things like that helps you to grow, okay, use that. Um, here's the next one, kind of a yellow-orange, kind of a lighter shade of orange. Again, you know, a lot of these I don't use quite the large amount of collars that I used to use. But uh, this one here I would use, I think, for, um, I don't even remember what I used it for. I don't use this one very much anymore, uh, the yellow-orange. But uh, next, I use this one here, pink. 
I use pink and actually I have uh, another one here I forgot to include but this pink one here I actually use this for uh, sodomite verses so you know because they're kind of pink so you know effeminate you know because pink is a very feminine color so I've you know whenever I see verses that talk about sodomy or whatever else a lot of times I'll highlight it in pink and then they have this one which is kind of a what is this thing uh, magenta magenta here I'll use this one uh, in verses that talk about uh, women the proper roles of women uh, being submissive keeper at home things like that um, modest apparel adorning themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety verses that talk about women that are used to help women that's the one I use magenta for that then um, violet uh, I use the violet one for uh, verses that talk about Jesus Christ being a king um, because you know they, they put a, a purple robe on him and were mocking him you know saying hail the king of the Jews not realizing that he actually is a king and king has been a collar of royalty so you know I used I realized that they used it to mock Jesus but you know it's the same thing as a lot of people mocked you know Christians they were called Christians first at Antioch they didn't call themselves Christians people were calling them Christians so in the same kind of spirit there you know that you know violet is a a collar of royalty so I say you know yeah you guys were making fun of Jesus but the fact of the matter is he is actually a king he is the king of the Jews so I use the collar of violet to denote any verses that talk about Jesus being the king you know so and uh, his coming millennial reign I'll use those verses for that again gray um, I will use gray actually there's some verses in the Old Testament some interesting verses talking about cutting stones with saws and I always thought that was kind of like what you know cutting stones with saws till I actually saw an old picture of these guys back in the I guess late 1800s or something like that and they were actually cutting huge big stones with these giant big saws big hand saws big handles on them and stuff like that and they'd, they'd cut through these stones it was amazing so you know I, I thought what am I ever going to use a gray pencil for and I mean the thing still almost has the factory sharpen thing on it because there's only a few verses talking about about stone and stone crafting Again, you know, I was a, a wood turner and an artist and, and things, so I have a lot of interest in um, doing things by hand. So I, I was fascinated by this thing of, of sawing stones by hand. Um, I can put the scripture reference down in the, you know, area here, you know, like that, and uh, to show you where that's at. But that's what I use this one for. That's what I use gray for. Um... Here you have kind of a, I don't think actually, I don't think I used, no, I don't use that one. This one here, um, this peach collar, I use this one when it talks about the flesh, okay, certain things about the flesh. Not necessarily sins, but just the flesh itself, the flesh being corruptible or whatever else. You know, all flesh is, is as grass kind of thing. I'll use peach to refer to the flesh, you know, because it's somewhat flesh collared there you know and then I have brown there um, to uh, denote the descendants of Ham okay throughout the Old Testament when I see uh, Hittites and things like that I'll, I'll oftentimes you know um, Amorites and, and these other things you say well, who are they descendants of where did they come from you know and things because there's not a whole lot about Japheth and his descendants there's some but a lot of the a lot of the uh, heathen nations that the nation of Israel were, they were dealing with are actually descendants of Ham so I use the brown one for that so that's my collar code system um, again it helped me early on to you know really memorize the scriptures and things uh, I actually don't even use it that much anymore to be honest um, I think I even have some here uh, Back in Isaiah, I was going through Isaiah a while back, and 
I would start to collar. I was starting to collar some of my verses, and then I never, never went back and finished collaring them in. Let's see if I can find a few. But you know, like I said, it's it's not like a, a thing that you have to collar your Bible. You have to highlight certain things and whatever else. Um, you know, I have I've done it different times, and and certainly if it helps you to memorize the King James Bible, well, go ahead, do that. But uh, yeah, I can't find any right now. I might have actually gone back and finished them. But you know, if if you want to come up with your own system, you know, use the different collars and that pertain to different things. Well, go ahead. But uh, a lot of people have asked, so there's my video on it. And uh, I guess that's it for this video. So um, keep studying your Bible. Um, do things that, that help you to memorize scripture. So that's going to be it. Uh, I've been working really hard on a lot of different studies here, so I'm a little bit tired right now. <laughs> that's why I'm a little bit uh, not quite with it. And uh, so I apologize for being somewhat, um, somewhat uh, sketchy with my thoughts here. I've been losing a lot of sleep here recently, so I'm um, going to get back to work here with some other things and uh, but I just hopefully that answers the questions so that'll be it thank you for watching